car insurance is going through the roof. So why is this happening and how can you save money? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner where we help you the consumer master the process of car buying and car ownership. Car insurance is getting wildly expensive across North America. According to new consumer price index data, the average cost of car insurance spiked 26% in 2024 compared to the previous year and is now averaging over $2,500 annually. In Canada, insurance rates are already up around 13% across the board for provinces with private insurance, according to RateHub data. And some experts predict that rates could go up by around 20% by the end of the year and even higher next year. So we'll get into what's causing these massive insurance increases and what you can do to reduce your insurance premiums. But first, a huge thanks to Omvic, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, for sponsoring a portion of this video. So why exactly are insurance premiums increasing so rapidly? Well, quite simply, insurance companies are paying out a lot more in claims than ever before. And as payouts increase, insurance companies pass down those costs onto consumers. Now, there are several driving factors behind this rapid increase in claims and payouts. And one of the biggest ones is auto theft. It is no secret that auto theft has skyrocketed over the past few years. According to NHTSA, auto theft has increased by 25% across the US over the past few years to the point where a vehicle is stolen every 30 seconds. Auto theft has risen even faster in Canada, where theft claims have increased by 56% over the past five years. The annual cost of auto theft to Americans is over $8 billion, and it's now over $1.5 billion in Canada, a staggering 254% increase according to data from the Insurance Bureau. Now, to get more information on this subject for this video, I spoke with an insurance expert that I work with, Debbie Arnold from Sound Insurance, a business development manager for Personal Lines. And here is what she had to say. So let's put, let's put losses into perspective. Prior to COVID nationwide, claims were averaging about $2 billion a year in Canada. After COVID and in 2023, overall claims nationwide were over $4 billion. So in under four years, claims have doubled. Contributing factor, auto theft is $1.4 billion of that for 2023. The numbers were halfway through the year. The numbers are trending to be even more this year in 2024 than what they were in 2023. So auto theft is over 25% of claims being paid out nationwide. The biggest place that that's happening, of course, is Ontario, because Ontario comprises 44% of the market for auto insurance. Of course, vehicles that are more likely to be stolen are also more likely to have higher insurance premiums. If you want to know what are the most stolen vehicles that you might want to watch out for, I'll put a link to that video up in the corner. But it's not just those who have their vehicles stolen that are victims. Unfortunately, we all pay the price as a result of auto theft. From settling insurance claims to law enforcement to court resources and general economic costs, when thieves steal, we all pay the price. Now after auto theft, the next major driving factor behind increasing insurance premiums is the cost and the complexity of vehicle repairs. Vehicles are not only getting more expensive to purchase, but also more expensive to repair when involved in collisions. Modern vehicles are more complicated and difficult to work on, which drives up labor costs. They're filled with more technology, including more cameras, sensors, and other electronics, which add to the repair costs. Sadly, it's now common for relatively minor to moderate damage from a collision to rack up an enormous five-figure repair bill. And this is true of almost every type of vehicle. And not only do insurance companies have to pay more money to repair vehicles, but because of parts shortages and repairs taking a lot longer to complete in general, insurance companies also have to pay out a lot more money due to loss of use, such as paying for rental cars. So because insurance companies are paying, are paying out longer on loss of use and the parts are more expensive, Five years ago, it could be, you know, $750 to $1,000 to repair a bumper. Because of technology in vehicles today, 
it's not 750, it's 3,000, it's 4,000, depending on the type of model, the vehicle might be written off in that case. Um, certain vehicles, if, uh, the electric vehicles, for example, a Tesla, if the battery gets damaged, it's a complete write-off because it's $40,000 to replace that battery. These are things because technology is getting more advanced, repairs are getting more expensive, rates are going to go up. That money has to come from somewhere. Another major contributing factor to sky-high insurance premiums is insurance fraud. Like auto theft, insurance fraud costs insurance companies an enormous amount of money every single year. Insurance fraud comes in many forms, including staged collisions, cyber attacks, and individuals who take advantage of insurance companies and just in general taking advantage of the entire insurance system. Other examples of fraud are um, putting, in, uh, putting in fraudulent claims. These staged accidents, those are still occurring putting in for more accident benefits than what you should actually, what you would actually qualify for. Asking for more accident benefits than what you actually qualify for is another problem. Um, and that usually puts up red flags. Now, traditionally, and this is something I've been arguing with insurance companies for a very long time, is that they would just pay the claim, pay the claim, pay the claims. They can't do that anymore. That's unsustainable. So now each insurance company has developed a fraud squad and they are looking very closely at these claims. So when you have a claim, even if it's legitimate, you may be asked a lot of questions to substantiate that claim. So these people that are committing those that fraud, that misrepresentation, they're making it difficult for everybody because the insurance companies have been burned so often. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, she thinks poor insurance companies. It's not that. It's that, that we all pay for it. And yes, we do all pay for it. Eventually, all of these costs get passed down from insurance companies to all of us in the form of increased insurance premiums. And on top of all of this, accident rates do seem to be going up in the U.S., where NHTSA reports that accident fatalities are up significantly when compared to a few years ago. This could be due to a number of factors, including distracted driving with cell phone use while driving, increasingly complicated vehicle touchscreens, vehicles getting bigger and heavier, and of course, impaired driving plays a role too. Ultimately, all of these contributing factors are what insurance companies use to justify increasing your insurance premiums. So what can you do about it? And what can you do to help reduce your insurance rates? Well, we're going to get into that next, but first, a quick message from OMVIC about your car buying rights. In Ontario, dealerships are regulated by OMVIC and they're required to follow certain rules and regulations under the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act. These rules are designed to protect you, the consumer. For example, when a dealership advertises a vehicle, the advertised price needs to include all fees and charges except for sales tax and licensing. And dealerships are also required to make certain disclosures to you, such as whether a vehicle was involved in a serious collision or has any serious damage that you need to be aware of. Dealerships are required to follow these rules and any dealer that fails to do so could potentially be investigated and disciplined by OMVIC. So, if you feel like you've encountered a dealership that might be breaking the rules, don't be afraid to report that dealer. And to learn more about your car buying rights and to access free car buying resources, just visit the OMVIC website. I'll put more information in the description below. Okay, getting back to car insurance. Now, what can you do to reduce your insurance premiums? This is a question that I asked the insurance expert and this is what she had to say. Okay, so first things first, always try and package your home and auto together or your property and auto. If you're renting, you should have tenants insurance so and definitely purchase that. It can bring down your auto insurance by 15%. Check what type of discounts your insurance companies offer for any loss mitigation or anti-theft mitigation devices or programs like TAG or um, immobilizers or uh, steering wheel locks if they offer any discounts there. Always check your policy to see that you're being rated correctly. Um, the rating variables have changed since COVID, so you might want to update that. Um, always shop around and check because from company to company, as I 
said before, I have a list of 18 companies with 18 different ways that they're dealing with auto theft. If you have one of those targeted vehicles, you could be being surcharged anywhere from $500 to $1,500. So check around and see what uh, other companies are offering when it comes to that. There's no question. Every consumer needs to use every tool at their disposal to help reduce their insurance premiums. And if you're not sure how to do that, make sure to consult with an insurance expert, such as an insurance broker, to help you out. Now, it seems to me that regardless of the circumstances, there is this feeling that insurance companies are always eventually finding ways to slowly or rapidly increase insurance premiums. Even during times when they're saving money and not paying out a lot of money in claims, such as during the early days of the pandemic when hardly anybody was driving, did all those savings get passed down to all of us? Well, it didn't really seem likely or at least not by a meaningful amount. And now we've reached the point where insurance companies are paying a ton of money in claims due to all the different issues mentioned in this video, insurance premiums are going up and consumers desperately need relief. What can be done about this? And do we need to see major change to the entire insurance system? Well, that's something that I asked the insurance expert. In Ontario, many of the provinces that have private insurance, it's highly regulated. Should we have a new product? I absolutely believe so. Our product is set up to be taken advantage of, unfortunately. So if we could reduce the amount of lawsuits first and foremost, 90% of the lawsuits that are going through are completely unnecessary. Ontario has a very robust accident benefit schedule or to help people when they're injured in an auto accident. Unfortunately, it gets abused. Um, people are, you know, taking longer to heal or saying they're taking longer to heal. They're suing. I have, I have lawsuits for non-chargeable losses. In Ontario, you're not allowed to sue unless you were, the person was 100% at fault that hit you. That's who you can sue and you were seriously injured. We're seeing lawsuits for scratches on bumpers. That's ridiculous. Get rid of the personal injury lawyers when it comes to auto um, auto claims. Um, if we got if we take away that, that's going to remove most of the most of the claims, right? Most of the lawsuits because most of them are completely invalid. If the Ontario plan was working the way it's supposed to, we would not be paying as much. Unfortunately, people find ways around it to abuse it. So it shouldn't be cash for care, right? It should, it should be you're legitimately injured. Get We need to get you back to the place you were prior to the loss. We need to make you well. Let's use the resources there instead of using up court resources for ridiculous unmerited claims. That would solve our problems. So will reducing auto theft, insurance fraud, and all the frivolous lawsuits be enough to help bring down insurance premiums? Or do we need to see bigger change to the insurance system? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also take a look at my other videos by clicking these links over here. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to visit carhelpcan.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.